As racism, xenophobia, and fear-mongering spread across the globe alongside COVID-19, 74 Jewish groups have stood up to express solidarity and support for Chinese and Chinese Americans. In a letter co-signed last Friday by dozens of Jewish organizations across the U.S., the community said they are concerned about rising xenophobia aimed at Chinese people in the U.S. and beyond. Adding, they will be more committed than ever to upholding the ideals of welcoming spirit. And Chinese ambassador to the U.S. Cui Tiankai thanked the Jewish communities on Twitter for their heartful support. He also called for solidarity in combating racial discrimination and building a better shared future. So, what is behind this gesture, and what is the impact? Joining me from Washington D.C. is David Bernstein. President and CEO of the Jewish Council for Public Affairs, which organized the letter from New York, Fred Tum, President of the America China Public Affairs Institute, which also received the letter, and in Beijing, Professor Li Jinzhao from Beijing Foreign Studies University. Uh, so, my question first uh, to you, uh, Mr. Bernstein. We have some quotes from the letter. We are concerned about the rising xenophobia aimed at Chinese people in this country and abroad over the COVID-19 coronavirus. We know that in such times, concern can quickly turn into hysteria, which can lead to scapegoating. We pledge to help ensure that Chinese people feel safe and supported, and to combat attacks and stereotyping on social media. We know from history, ours and yours, that such fear-mongering can be devastating. So, Mr. Bernstein, uh, of course, the Chinese, especially those fighting the disease in Wuhan, must be very inspired and thankful for those messages. But tell us, why did the JCPI come up with such an idea? So, we are in active conversation with friends in the Chinese American community, with the Chinese community globally. Um, our good friend Fred Tang, who's joining us today. Um, is one of those people who has been a long-standing friend of the Jewish community, and we talk to them, and they tell us that they're facing some very challenging times. First of all, they have relatives in China who uh, they're worried about. Second of all, they're worried about, of course, rising tensions in uh, U.S.-Chinese relations, and then, of course, then this comes along, and they're hearing reports about discrimination, about young people who feel like they're being shunned by their friends or maybe some sitting on a subway and somebody avoids sitting next to the Chinese kid on, a sub, on the subway. You know, these are concerns that we're hearing about. And then we see on social media, of course, some really ugly attacks. Mm. And we knew that that was a time for us to express our clear solidarity with the Chinese people. And let you know that you have a friend in the Jewish people, that we have, that we, and we have the utmost admiration for China and the Chinese people, and we're going to be there for you in these times. And Mr. Tang, is xenophobia a widespread thing in the United States, and what is the reason for that? I think the Jewish people and the Chinese people have experienced this kind of discrimination in history. This is not the first time. Whenever there's domestic or international crisis, the ugliness of racism stereotype also rises. I always say the political virus and the racism virus and the hate virus is more even scarier than biological virus. And obviously because of the current U.S.-China relations and, and also because of this epidemic, uh, right now there is a rising of racism against the Chinese uh, and we really thank the Jewish community mm. coming out in numbers to support us. And David, what is the thing that connects the Jewish people with the Chinese people facing a threat like an epidemic? Yeah, I think it, 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 it's both our history where, you know, China has exercised great moral courage in supporting the Jewish uh, people, uh, particularly in Shanghai and World War II. Um, we have common values um, in the United States. I think both uh, value um, family, value democracy, value um, common, our common heritage, and we work hard together um, to, make, uh, to, to, you know, to, to make sure that we are um, active citizens of our society. So given that, given that um, connection, we, um, 
we find it easy to talk to each other, to work with each other. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're there for each other during the most challenging times. And I have to tell you, the Chinese uh, community in the United States was there for us. After the massacre at, in Pittsburgh at a synagogue, mm. um, many Chinese groups reached out to the Jewish community and let us know that they cared. And in your letter, you said fear-mongering can be devastating. In what ways did you mean by that? Well, we know both um, from Jewish history in America and from Chinese history in America that when tensions go up, when society feels insecure, they, they, people look for others to blame. They scapegoat groups like the Chinese community or the Jewish community. And we know if one community feels unsafe, if the mm. Chinese American community feels unsafe, we too could feel unsafe. And it's not going to take long for that kind of bigotry and xenophobia to catch up with us as well. And do you think uh, your gesture can probably inspire similar groups to have outpourings of sympathy and understanding for what has happened in China and the Chinese? That, that's our hope. That's our hope. You know, there's a phrase, never let a good crisis go to waste. Obviously, this is not a good crisis. It's a serious human crisis with real victims. But at the same time, we're saying to ourselves, let's make this an opportunity to deepen our ties to, between American Jews and Chinese Americans, between Jews worldwide and, and China. And also, let's make this an, uh, a, an opportunity to send a signal to the larger society of how we can express solidarity and support in times of uh, distress. Obviously, this is uh, very much appreciated by the Chinese. Let's look at the China response from the Chinese ambassador, uh, Cui Tiankai, uh, on Twitter. Uh, he said, we are encouraged by JCPA's heart for support for the Chinese people. Indeed, there is no room for racism, xenophobia, and fear-mongering. We stand together in overcoming COVID-19, in combating racial discrimination, and building a better shared future. So, Professor Li, uh, obviously mm -hmm. this is a difficult time for China and the mm -hmm. Chinese. We talk a lot, a lot about uh, living in a community of shared future and the importance of global solidarity. Of course, there's no better example than combating an epidemic that knows no boundaries such as this to understand what solidarity of the world means. Mm. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is a really difficult and tying time, a uh, trying time. And uh, I think the letter is a very good gesture um, it means to China that, once again, humanity can win over racism, warmth and support will dispel hatred, scapegoating, or stigma. Um, I'm not quite surprised by the letter from over 70 Jewish organizations because um, the Jewish Council of Public Affairs has been active in voicing out social justice, mm. especially for the voiceless and the marginalized since its founding in 1944. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, Jewish Americans um, have experienced the mounting crime of hatred in recent years, such as uh, the tragic shooting in 2018 in Pittsburgh. And they are keenly aware of the importance of uh, targeted communities to stand together and give each other support in this time of hardship. Uh, so I definitely think that their example is inspiring to, and to uh, what extent many do you think other international. We can trace this back to the Second World War when China issued mm. visas for Jews, including those being persecuted in Nazi Germany, and Shanghai provided shelters to them. Right. Uh, and actually, even before World War II, uh, the bond between Jewish and Chinese Americans uh, uh, went way back. Uh, such as in 2003, when many Jews suffered horrid persecution in Russia, the Chinese-American community in New York City actually reached out and provided help and shelter. Uh, another example, a very uh, recent one, again uh, mentioned by David Bernstein just now, is that over 100 Chinese-American organizations all over the United States showed sympathy and declared solidar solidarity with Jewish Americans mm. after the shooting uh, at the, the Jewish synagogue in Pittsburgh. 
And Fred, uh, this letter was uh, written in English and Chinese to also hundreds of uh, Asian American leaders and organizations, including your own. Uh, what is your reaction? Yes, certainly, I'm very grateful and appreciative. Uh, this is a time for us to stand together, but this is always we have to stand together. Uh, and, and I think that we certainly thank the Jewish community. Uh, there's a, a short poem, say, first they come to get the Jews, I did not speak up because I was not a Jew. Then they came to get the trade unionists, I did not speak up because I was not a trade unionist, to make it short. Then when they come to get me, there's nobody left to speak up for me. So it is within that kind of spirit that we always have to stay together against hate, against violence, against racism and xenophobia. And Mr. Bernstein, uh, you said that many Chinese-owned businesses are also being affected uh, by the misinformed concerns about this COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, how badly are their businesses hurt? Well, I've heard the figure that there's been up to a 50% decline in Chinese restaurant sales. I mean, that's just devastating and hurtful and completely unnecessary. So we're making sure that we send delegations to Chinatowns and, um, and cities around the United States. There was one just with Mr. Tang's organization about a week and a half ago. And we're going to see to it that more of those visits take place because we want to send a strong message that this is, um, this is not uh, the kind of risk people are making it out to be. Mm -hmm. Let's be there to support each other, including on the economic front. But, but, but do you understand that people are afraid of the virus and they want to keep away from uh, people might coming from that part of the world and they go into panic mode? And, but uh, restaurants and, right. and Chinese packages? Well, you know, uh, well, the, the, uh, the word, uh, you know yeah. xenophobia, it's a phobia, it's about fear. And it's about ungrounded fear. And so our point is, let's not allow irrational fears to take over and become a source of discrimination and bigotry. Fred, you want to add something? Well, I just say what you just have described is the racism, is the xenophobia. And, and that is what we're trying to come back. In fact, when we were going, I mean, even to this day, there is not one confirmed case of COVID-19 in New York. There's some suspected cases, but there's not one case in the whole state of New York. So again, for that kind of fear, it's really not necessary. Not that we should not exercise caution. So wh what can we do to talk them out of it if people uh, overreact and, and think of those things uh, out of proportion about the threat of a virus coming from the other end of the world? Fred? Well, the, the answer to, yes, I'm sorry, I the think, answer to I think, misinformation yeah. is information. Go ahead, Fred. Yeah, I think that there's two, two parts. Certainly, there's a medical part, and we are observing in terms of China and also the world in terms of this virus being spreading. But I think that the Chinese government have exercised utmost efficiency and really into the detail of disclosing the numbers and so forth. Uh, on the other hand, is to give people the understanding uh, not to believe in the disinformation and go on with their life. Uh, and, and I think that that's, uh, you know, one of the cases actually in the last flu season, 2019 to 2020, in the United States, there's 16,000 people who died because of the flu. 280,000 people were infected and 9.7 million people were suspected having that. Mm. Uh, if the United States were disclosing those numbers day by day, state by state, it will also create a uh, big panic in the world as well. But I think that, you know, medical issues are important, but we also should not use it as an excuse to discriminate against other people. Yeah, keep our heads uh, cool. Thank you very much, Fred, and also David, and Professor Lee as well. And you're watching The Point here on CGTN.